billions of years of geological processes have sculpted the Earth's crust into a mixture of different type of rocks and minerals, and occasionally people discover rare rocks that look absolutely stunning, with an array of unique colors and features. So join me for today's video, we're going to embark on a journey to uncover the top 15 most extraordinary looking rocks ever discovered. Let's begin. Number 15. Tiger's Eye a type of metamorphic rock that's produced under high temperatures, tiger's eye is a member of the quartz family and is known for its almost unbelievable golden-brown color and often exhibiting an impressive chatoyancy or reflective cat's eye effect. This illusion is caused by the presence of parallel fibers within the stone, which reflect the light and create a glimmering band of light that moves across the surface as the stone is moved around. It takes its name from the striking resemblance to the eye of a tiger, and as such has long been associated with the powerful cats, and even believed to possess energy that gives its owner courage, confidence, and protection. Ancient civilizations often used tiger's eye as a talisman to ward off evil and bring good luck. Tiger's eye stones are found in places like Burma, the United States, China, and Korea, but are commonly found in Western Australia and South Africa. It's made of silicon dioxide and it gets its color from the presence of iron oxide, but sometimes unusual variants may also be found, such as those that are found in Arizona and California that have streaks of white in them, which happen because of the presence of asbestos. Number 14. Azurite Anything in nature that takes on a deep blue color is usually beautiful and highly sought after, and azurite is no different. Often known as chesolite after a location in France where it's found, it's a copper carbonate material that forms as a secondary product in the oxidation zones of copper ore deposits. The name azurite comes from the Persian word lazward, which simply means blue. Azurite rocks can range from a rich royal blue color to a darker indigo shade depending on the conditions that they formed in, and when powdered, it can be used as a pigment in paint. With Michelangelo said to be particularly fond of it, and even using it in some of his most renowned works like the frescoes in the Sistine Chapel. As it's found around copper deposits, there are plenty of places around the world where impressive specimens of azurite can be found. From Bisbee, Arizona, where rosettes of up to 2 inches or 5.1 centimeters in diameter have been found, to Namibia, where arguably the best are found that can measure up to 10 inches or 25 centimeters in diameter. It is, though, unstable in air and will begin to lose its deep blue coloration as soon as it's removed from the ground. This and its relative softness means it's rarely used in jewelry, but it can be displayed in collections as long as it's kept in a cool temperature. Number 13. Rhodochrosite The beautifully rose-red or pink-colored rhodochrosite is a manganese carbonate material that belongs to the calcite group. The name rhodochrosite comes from Greek and translates to mean rose color, and it's this unusual hue that's made it a popular type of rock to collectors since it was first discovered. It exhibits various shades of pink, ranging from delicate pastel hues to deep rich tones, and also is commonly part of a crystal twinning, whereby it'll form as part of a rock alongside another type of crystal, leading to an even more impressive and unusual display. As it's a type of manganese, it's thought that the first time rhodochrosite was found was actually relatively recently, in 1813 at a site in Romania in a silver mine. The country is still the largest source of rocks like these, but more recently they've also been discovered in Argentina, where it's the national gemstone, and in Colorado, where it's the state mineral. Interestingly, geologists can determine exactly where in the world a rock of rhodochrosite has come from simply by looking at the particular shade of color and the presence of any patterning in it with those from Argentina having banded patterns, while those from Colorado tend to have a much deeper and richer color due to the levels of manganese that they contain. Number 12. Scolocyte The bizarre but incredible-looking scolocyte is a mineral that belongs to the zeolite group and is made mainly from calcium silicate. Its name comes from the Greek word skolex, meaning worm, because of its worm-like crystal formations. This delicate and translucent mineral has gained popularity among mineral enthusiasts and collectors for its unique properties and aesthetic appeal. The thing that stands out most about scolocyte is its unusual structure, which is composed of thin needle-like prisms that often intersect and create intricate patterns. These crystals can form radiating sprays or tufts and can range in color from milky white to completely colorless, which allows light to pass through and create a beautiful glow. It was first found in Germany in 1813, but is unusual in that it can be found just about anywhere as long as you look in the right place. Specimens have been discovered in Iceland, California, Brazil, Scotland, and even Antarctica, although the best specimens have so far been unearthed in India. Sometimes it also may take on a slight coloration from impurities within the structure, which can turn it pink, red, or green. 
but for collectors, it's the pure white ones that are most appealing, with their almost bone-like appearance. Number 11. Fluorite Fluorite, which you may also know as fluorospar, is the mineral crystal that forms from calcium fluoride. The biggest deposits of it are believed to be in South Africa, Mexico, and China, but it can be found all around the world, albeit in very small quantities, so relatively little is mined each year. In its purest form, fluorite is completely transparent, but it's allochromatic, which means it can incorporate virtually any element to give it a rich color. Fluorite can therefore be found in most colors you can think of, with the most common being purple, blue, green, and yellow, and the rarest being pink, red, brown, or black. These crystals also shine brightly under ultraviolet light, and it's because fluorite behaves like this that the word for that is fluorescence. This property also means that it's historically been used in the production of important objects, such as ornamental cups that react unexpectedly in changing light conditions. Beyond its amazing coloration and crystalline structure, fluoride is also needed in industrial applications because it's one of the best sources of fluoride, something that's necessary for the production of hydrofluoric acid and other various chemicals. Those stones that aren't deemed worthy for collector's pieces are therefore ground down for those purposes, and this drives the main demand for it worldwide, even though from an enthusiast's point of view, a perfectly formed fluoride rock is one of the most beautiful and magical things that nature produces. Number 10. Carnelian Carnelian is a mineral that's most commonly found in Indonesia, Brazil, India, Russia, and Germany. And because of its unique reddish hue, it's also the name given to that specific color. It's a variety of chalcedony, which itself contains a combination of quartz and moganite. But what makes a carnelian different is the presence of iron oxide. This leads it to develop shades from a light orange to virtually black, but it's the red ones that are the most prized as semi-precious stones. Often forming in geodes, carnelian crystals are commonly seen as red layers within the surrounding chalcedony, while these, on their own, are incredible display pieces people have for thousands of years separated the carnelian to make jewelry. In fact, the earliest designs date as far back as the early Neolithic era, and are at least 7,000 years old. It was very popular in ancient Greece and the Roman Empire, where carnelian jewelry signified wealth and were used as stamps for imprinting wax because wax doesn't stick to the stones. Nowadays, it's not considered to be as rare or special as other precious stones, but there are exceptions to this when a particularly stunning rock is found, in which case, because of its display potential, it can be extremely valuable. Number 9. Rose Quartz Quartz is a type of crystal that's found inside rocks that most people are familiar with thanks to its unmistakable shape, and the fact that it's used in the design of clocks because of its piezoelectric properties. Despite being useful, however, there's no doubt that some specimens are absolutely stunning, something that can be further enhanced by the fact that it can exist in a number of different varieties depending on any other elements that may be present in their formation. While pure quartz is colorless or transparent, its impurities can create a solid colored crystal. One of the most popular of these is rose quartz. This pinkish color normally comes from these crystals because of the presence of titanium, iron, or manganese, and this leads it to be somewhere between pale pink and rose red. It's also possible that some of them have smaller needle-like structures within that can further reflect light in interesting ways. The rarest type of rose quartz, however, contain trace amounts of phosphate or aluminum and are often called crystalline rose quartz. This is a form that's mainly found in Brazil and in Maine, and it must be treated particularly carefully because the coloration can fade in the presence of sunlight. Number 8. Lapis Lazuli Known to have been mined as long ago as 9,000 years at a site in modern-day Afghanistan, lapis lazuli has been a treasured type of rock formation from ancient times, where it was used by the Indus Valley Civilization and the ancient Egyptians, even featuring on the death mask of Tutankhamun. It's a metamorphic rock that's composed primarily of the minerals lazurite, calcite, and pyrite, and this gives it a distinctive blue or purple coloration with flecks of golden pyrite, making it the perfect aesthetic for signifying royalty and wealth. The name lapis lazuli comes from Greek, and it literally means blue stone, and as word of it spread around the world, it became highly sought after, not just for the rock itself, but because it can be ground into a powder and used to make ultramarine, which was by far the most expensive and exclusive color of paint. To this day, it's still mainly mined in that original region of Afghanistan, but other sources have been found too, with the biggest being in Russia and Chile, as well as smaller deposits in countries like Canada, the United States, Italy, and India. Because of the way it forms, large singular pieces are very hard to come by, but there are specimens where the deepness of the blue and the accents of the gold are clearest to see. 
These are, of course, now the most valuable ones, especially as now there's less of a reliance on lapis lazuli for use as a pigment, with plenty of artificial alternatives now available that are far more affordable. Number 7. Obsidian Obsidian is a shimmering black rock that may sometimes have green, brown, yellow, orange, red, or blue infused within it. It's a type of igneous rock, and it's actually volcanic glass that's formed when lava from a volcano rapidly cools at such a rate that there's no time for crystals to develop. It's normally therefore found at the periphery of volcanically active areas, and is only created by specific types of lava that are rich in minerals like silicon, oxygen, aluminum, sodium, and potassium. Once formed, it's extremely brittle, so large pieces aren't common, and it's normally characterized by sharp edges that almost look purposefully cut when it's first found. There are plenty of places around the world where it can be sourced, from Argentina and Chile to Canada, Iceland, Italy, Scotland, New Zealand, and the US, and many more. The obsidian found in each region, though, will always be slightly different because of the different chemical makeup. So, for example, specimens found in Mexico may have a rainbow appearance because of the presence of Hedenbergite, where fire obsidian that's found elsewhere takes on an iridescent quality because it contains nanoparticles of magnetite. As it's formed and found on the surface, civilizations have collected obsidian for centuries, with the first documented use of it dating back to 700,000 BC, when pieces of the sharp glass were used as arrowheads or as rudimentary blades for surgical procedures. It was also polished to make some of the earliest mirrors, and more recently, it's either been collected as an ornamental object, particularly specimens that glimmer with hidden colors, and it's still used to make sharp blades, which, when made in a certain way, can be many times sharper than is possible with steel. Number 6. Labradorite First discovered in Labrador, Canada, which is where it's named after, Labradorite is a type of calcium-rich mineral that can form in igneous rocks. Since its initial discovery, it's also been found at sites in Poland, Norway, China, the US, Australia, and Madagascar, and is sought after because of an unusual iridescent quality it possesses that's unlike any other rock, and is known as Labradorescence. This optical phenomenon creates a captivating display of colors that shift and change as the stone is viewed from different angles. It can display a wide range of colors, including vibrant blues, greens, yellows, oranges, and even flashes of purple or pink, all of which happen as a result of light interference within the crystal structure. At first, you could easily dismiss it as an uninteresting whitish-gray rock, but once it's polished, the secret display of color is revealed, and it's one of the most mesmerizing rocks you'll ever see. Each specimen is unique because the coloration depends on the exact crystalline structure and the speed at which it originally cooled, meaning some Labradorite may show very little Labradorescence, while other pieces will almost look as if they're alive. As well as being fascinating display rocks on their own, smaller fragments of it are now commonly used in jewelry to add a mystical quality to pieces. It's often cut into cabochons to bring out the iridescent effect to its fullest, and it can be incorporated into rings, necklaces, bracelets, and of course earrings. Number 5. Iron Pyrite There's no doubt that the most precious metal of all is gold, and people have been digging, searching, and fighting for it for thousands of years. Those who look for it are, of course, mainly doing so because of its high value, but there's a type of rock that countless people have found over the years and believe to be gold, despite being something else entirely. Often called fool's gold because of this mistake, iron pyrite isn't anywhere near as valuable, but in many ways its crystalline structure is equally, if not more, beautiful. The word pyrite is Greek for stone or mineral which strikes fire, and was given to a number of stones that would produce sparks if they were hit by steel. Often found in quartz veins, sedimentary rock, metamorphic rock, and sometimes as a mineral in fossils, its chemical formula is iron 2-disulfide, and it's the most abundant of all sulfide minerals. Iron pyrite normally develops cuboid-shaped crystals, as well as shapes called framboids, which are described as being raspberry-shaped masses, but will also take on a variety of other shapes that are influenced by the surrounding conditions. It's these defined structures that are the best way to tell it apart from gold, along with its brittleness, and once it's exposed to air, it'll slowly start to decompose. Despite its amazing appearance, iron pyrite has long been seen as no more than an industrial mineral, because gold is so much more popular, and it's used in the production of sulfur dioxide, as a cathode in lithium batteries as well as in crystal radios. It has had its time as a decorative crystal too though, and it was commonly used during the Victorian era to make marcasite jewelry. Today it's still highly important in Thai culture, where it's believed to be a sacred substance that can help to ward off black magic, the actions of demons and evil in general. Number 4. Jasper 
Made up of tiny pieces of quartz alongside chalcedony and a number of other minerals, jasper is an impure type of silica that's known for its red, yellow, green, or blue color, which features distinct banding or swirling patterns. It gets its name from the Greek word iapsis, which means spotted stone, and occasionally you may even come across a multicolored combination. It's found around the world, from countries like Russia, Kyrgyzstan, and France, to China, Japan, Spain, Madagascar, and the United States. Because its appearance is intrinsically linked to its mineral composition, it looks noticeably different from each source, so much so that there are countless varieties and naming conventions. Bruno jasper, for example, is found in canyons, while Lahontan jasper is found in lakes and rivers. But there are also forest fire or rainbow jaspers based on their particular colors, or brown Egyptian and red African jaspers based on the country where they were discovered. As with many rocks like this, the raw form of jasper is always an impressive thing to find, but the colors and patterns can be substantially enhanced by polishing it. It also breaks with a smooth surface, which makes it easier to prepare for ornamental uses, and this is one of the reasons why it was so popular in antiquity as a decorative stone. A red jasper was, for example, believed to have been the first stone on the breastplate of the high priest of the Israelites, and the tenth stone, too, is thought to have been a yellow jasper. With such variety of different patternings and colors, jasper has been in recent centuries a popular rock for use in jewelry, sculptures, and plenty more. Because no two pieces are the same, and it's relatively common, so isn't as expensive as other alternatives. Number 3. Amethyst Amethyst is a variety of quartz, which is known for its deep purple color that forms as a result of the presence of iron, other metals, and the fact that it's been irradiated. Its name means not intoxicated in Greek, which was given to it because it was once believed to prevent those who held it from being intoxicated, and this was the reason why ancient Greeks used to make drinking goblets from them. Its demand for this purpose made it a highly sought-after gemstone, of course, throughout history, and it's now very popular for jewelry, and it's the birthstone of February. Depending on where it's found, it can range in color from a light lavender to a deep purple, and it may also have noticeable secondary colors, normally blue or red. It's found in mines across the world, from Siberia and Sri Lanka to Brazil and Uruguay, and the purity and depth of its purple is the trait that's looked for the most. The best grade is called Deep Siberian, which is up to 80% purple and about 20% blue or red, but there are other types, such as Rose de France, which is much more pale, but in many ways equally as beautiful. One of the most enthralling things about amethyst, though, is that it can form in geodes, where hollows and rocks provide the perfect environment for the crystals to grow. Huge, naturally formed amethyst deposits are occasionally discovered, and these are some of the best mineral displays you'll ever see. Number 2. Bornite Bornite, which is commonly known as peacock ore, is a copper iron sulfide mineral that belongs to the sulfide mineral group, and it gets its name from the Scottish mineralogist Ignatius von Born, who first described it in 1725. Found around the world where copper ores have developed in places such as Montana and Connecticut, and with large formations in Austria, Zimbabwe, and Morocco, it's important as a copper ore because it contains around 63% copper, but that's far from why it's so popular with collectors. That's because during its formation, it blends with other minerals that can develop a complex crystalline structure that creates a captivating iridescence. It can show a wide range of colors, including shades of blue, purple, green, and gold. And this display is actually a result of thin layers of oxidation and tarnishing on the mineral surface, which interact with light to produce those dazzling colors. The brilliant hues and metallic luster of bornite often resemble the feathers of a peacock, which is why it's called peacock ore. And some more extremely rare examples can have unusual crystal shapes that make for an even more mesmerizing display. As its copper level is so high, though, bornite is normally ground up to retrieve the metal for commercial purposes, so only the best examples ever make it into the hands of collectors. Even then, it's rarely made into jewelry or valuable objects because the process of shaping it risks losing that colorful quality. So whenever you see a specimen, it'll normally be how it was when it was first dug up. This leads to some uniquely interesting pieces, though, because bornite doesn't just form deposits of its own. You may see it fused together with other rocks like transparent quartz or even silver. Number 1. Celestite Celestite, which is also known as celestine, is a stunningly blue mineral that's made up of strontium sulfate. Strontium is the element that's normally used in fireworks to give a blue color, and its presence in celestite crystals is what makes them so mesmerizing. Translating to mean celestial, of course, because it was once believed to reflect the power of the heavens, it's normally found in sedimentary rocks such as geodes, but can also be formed in different ways. 
The world's largest known geode is made of celestite, and it can be seen at the Crystal Cave on an island in Lake Erie, Ohio. Measuring a huge 35 feet or 11 meters in diameter at its widest, it contains celestite crystals that are up to 18 inches or 46 centimeters across, and it's thought to weigh as much as 300 pounds or 146 kilos. Celestite can be found all over the world, and in the same way as other crystals can take on wildly different colors. Pure celestite is blue, but white, pink, green, and red versions are possible too, often because of the presence of calcium or barium. One of the most surprising things about celestite, however, is that it's important in the growth of a specific series of protozoa. Most of the ones that form skeletons will do this with silica, but there's one called Ancatheria that consumes and makes its entire skeletal structure from celestite. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.